Index fund investing almost seems too good to be true. You just invest consistently each month or week as you get paid. You do it for decades and you end up with loads of money, at least more than your neighbors or the average investor. Now that's at least what history tells us when we look back at the returns of the market. You'll often hear that the stock market returns on average around nine or 10% per year over a long period. And that's true. If we look back more than a hundred years, the S&P 500, at least that's what we call it now, has delivered 9.75% per year with any dividends reinvested. But here's the problem. Problem. If we all know this as investors and we all want to be part of that growth, what happens if we all just start using index funds? What happens if we just throw money into the stock market every month or week without looking at what kind of companies are in the index or caring about the price we're paying? Surely, if we all just keep buying and buying, prices will get out of control, start to inflate and create a massive bubble. Some people definitely think this is the case, but what's the real story behind this and should we be worried? I'm someone who already has a big part of my portfolio in index funds and you might already have too. Should new investors start investing today into passive index funds like generations before, or are we really entering into one massive bubble? Let's dive into the data and find out. All right, so we know that passive index funds have been growing in popularity over the last few decades since they were made available to the public. And we've got people like John Bogle to thank for that over at Vanguard for really getting them pushed out. Before that, it was pretty much all actively managed funds or individual stock picking, which had high fees and commissions, and for the most time at least, pretty poor performance. The total passive indexing market now runs into the trillions of dollars and makes up the majority number of funds out there. Bloomberg showed that 53.8% of funds are now passive compared to active, which now makes them the majority, at least in the US equity market. And it looks like there's probably no slowing down. So here's where we run into our first big objection. Most index funds, at least in a traditional sense, are market cap weighted, meaning that very simply, they allocate more of their money to those larger companies. The bigger the company, the more weight it gets. So companies like Apple will get a bigger slice of the pie than the companies like McDonald's, even though they make the pies. Terrible joke. Now, critics have argued that this type of investing pushes the price of those already massive companies too high and bigger than they should be if the market was free to try and find that right price. Because that's the biggest concern with any bubble. Is the price fair or has it gone too far? Just like in any market, if you think about it, it's all about the buyer and the seller. And you could only get a price if a buyer and a seller agree to pay it. Without a buyer, a seller can ask for whatever they want, but it won't matter. And without a seller, a buyer can shout and they'll offer millions, but if nobody wants to sell, then nothing happens. So at any given time in the stock market, the buying and the selling is what sets the price. I know this might sound really simple and stupid, but many people forget that part. Stocks don't just go down because everyone sells. It's because there were more sellers than buyers, but you have to have someone else on the other end of every single deal. Passively managed funds, although mostly being buyers, can be sellers too, because not everyone in a fund is there to build wealth. Some owners need to draw down an income too. Don't forget that part. But here's the question then. If there was a massive index fund bubble, where are the passive index funds buying from? They have to have a seller on the end of their deal. It only functions if there's a trader or another person or institution to give them the stock they want when new money comes in. Interestingly enough, although we just said that over 50% of funds are now passively managed, at least in the US market, they still only make up a fraction of the overall market because there's so many players that make it up. BlackRock, one of the largest fund managers in the world, did some research into this topic. And although this is a few years old now, they show that the actual percentage of the market held by passively managed funds is just 6.3% in the US. And then also see how in Europe, it's even lower at 2.5%. Looking globally on the same page of the research, all forms of indexing make up 17.5% of the total market cap of investable companies, which leaves a huge amount of space for active traders and managers to try and beat the market, but more importantly, help set those prices on a daily basis. So on that first point, index fund investing passively is certainly a massive market, but it's really not the place where the buying and the selling is being done on a daily basis. That's left up to the traders. Also consider this point if index funds were in a bubble, how could major companies drop in price or even rise in price by double digit amounts in a single day just after earnings or major announcements. All of this price action is done by, you guessed it, 
traders and those buyers and sellers who are actively engaged in the market setting those prices. If index fund investing was in a bubble, the prices would hardly move and you'd certainly not see companies like Netflix or PayPal move more than double digits in a single trading day. On the next point, some critics will also argue that passive investing is making the stock market less efficient. It's only putting money to work in companies who are already large or already part of the index. Companies that might be growing really fast and part of a major trend in some new high-tech sector might get left out. Well, in fact, Kathy Wood, the the fund manager famous for her arc set of actively managed funds made the same argument about Tesla. The EV company was only included in the S&P 500 index in December 2020. So before that date, all of the trillions of dollars that were being passively indexed were missing out on that massive amount of growth. Before that date, the share price of Tesla had risen from around $50 in 2018 and 2019 to nearly $700 just before it went into the index. And yes, that's right, the index fund investors, you could argue, didn't benefit from that growth. However, I don't think this argument holds any strength whatsoever. Like any market, passive index funds are up against actively managed funds and traders. Passive funds have risen in popularity quite literally because they've beaten the active managers consistently over the long term and cost investors a lot less to take part. What this should then be doing is forcing those active managers who are left to be the absolute best of the best. The growth of index funds should push out the bad managers and just leave the good ones who then get more money flowing into their funds. Makes sense, right? Survival of the fittest, the best funds win because after all, we're all looking for the best returns. If anything, showing examples like Tesla should show you that there's plenty of opportunity out there for active fund managers to show off their skills. If the market is becoming less efficient, then those budding entrepreneurs and active managers should be rushing to the places with more opportunity and outsized gains so they can go on TV and get even more investors into their funds. After all, like we just said, us investors just wanna get the biggest gains we can, right? So in theory, the active fund managers should be doing just fine. Tell me they're just doing fine right now. Well, not so fast. Unfortunately, Kathy Wood's ARK Fund is about where it was just after the recovery had started from the pandemic. So all of those highs won't mean anything for a long-term investor. And over a five-year chart, the S&P 500 has actually performed better, up 69% compared to Kathy's 65%. What has always performed well though, with guaranteed returns, is hitting the like button. And don't forget to make sure you're subscribed. It does really help out small channels like mine. With that done, thank you very much. Let's keep looking at this video topic. It's funny, isn't it, that actually all of the stats and all of the data, I think, leaves out a critical thing which you might not be able to measure. If index funds are such a well-proven way to invest and we all stuck to the plan, and all of the data tells us it's the right thing to do, then why do we still see a huge part of the market trying to beat the market each day, chase those massive returns and invest in really risky stocks? It's almost like healthy eating and exercise. We all know it's the best thing for us, yet when we're tired or the sun's out like it is now, forget the diet, we're having a drink and why not grab a takeaway too? The part I think we forget to remember with all of this is human nature. As much as we all might like to think we're perfectly logical and perfectly rational all of the time, in reality, we're highly driven by our own emotions and fast returns and fast money always sounds a lot better than slowly drip feeding into an index fund. Unfortunately, even with the growth of index fund investing, I don't think a real bubble is even anywhere near close. Just look at how investors move their money when they see high returns. Going back to ARK, it's a great example here and we can also touch on another really famous mutual fund here too. You see, let's assume we've transported ourselves back a few months into the height of the 2021 bull market. As Kathy Wood's fund went up to the moon, there was excitement from everyone and loads of investors thought, right, I'm going to get on this rocket ship, otherwise it might be too late. On this chart, you can see the price of the ARK fund and also how much money was poured in by investors. What you'll notice is that the higher the fund went up in price, this purple line here, the more money that was attracted by investors, all the way to the top of the price, as you can see from these blue bars. Check out how much money was invested near the absolute peak of the fund's returns. Surely you'd expect investors to be a bit more careful at new all-time highs and maybe invest when the price was cheaper? In fact, the opposite happens most of the time. This can be witnessed over many decades in many different companies and funds. The moment the fund price started to come down was the same moment that less investors wanted to put money in, which totally goes against the buy low, sell high advice. It's the total opposite. Here's another famous story from one of the best fund managers of all time, Peter Lynch. He ran the Magellan Fund, which at one point was the largest mutual fund in the world. And Peter consistently beat the market during his period that he ran it, making millions of dollars for himself and many investors. However, although somewhat of an urban myth, many investors did actually lose money during that time he managed the fund. Some reports say the majority lost money, but it's not conclusive. However, what is certain is most investments come in during the good years, once he'd already outperformed, and investors were really bad at holding through the bad years and keeping their cash invested. They behaved exactly as we've seen with Kathy Wood's fund, 
They buy on the excitement on the way up and they sell out on the way down, afraid that they'll probably lose all of their money. But hang on, you might be saying, how does this part show that index funds are in a bubble? Well, I don't think they'll get that far exactly because of the behavior that we see time and time again in the market. So long as there'll be someone out there to show us that the grass is greener or a thousand percent returns in a year, there will always be a human element that wants us to chase it and some may very well succeed, pushing the rest of us to be jealous and maybe also joining in too. That part, I don't think will ever change. And finally, let's just consider one final point active management and passive management are a really good combination in order to function well the market needs both to be healthy and vibrant active managers need a good kick up the backside to go and hunt for market beating returns in neglected parts of the stock market and they also need competition from their generous and sometimes really expensive fees and then on the passive side investors need the active managers and traders out there to help set the price of the stocks and provide enough liquidity in the system for trading of shares to actually take place after all like we said if there's nobody left to buy or sell a share, then nothing can take place. It would end up in a stalemate like the old man in Disney's film Up, who doesn't sell to the developers no matter what they keep offering him for his house. Although it's not a great example of the stock market is if you hold on to your shares and never sell, I'm pretty sure that you won't end up floating away with balloons attached to your portfolio, but hey, never say never. Index funds in a bubble then? Well, not yet, but they are going to continue to grow in popularity and probably take up an even larger part of the market but that pressure in growth should allow plenty of space for the active managers and traders to play. Oh, and don't forget with investing, there's no reason why you can't only pick one way or the other. It's really a bit of a fake argument. You can quite happily invest all of your money passively and never look at the stock market, or you can go all active and spend your weekends with your head buried in financial statements, or you could just have a mix of the two. The world really is your oyster. There might come a day when some parts of the market become overinflated, but that's all part of the market cycle. And that's just the price you pay to enter into this wild west that is investing. If you do want to see any of my own investments, then please feel free to watch all of my public portfolio updates and look out for brand new ones this week as I do my monthly updates or check out some of my most popular Vanguard funds that you might like to invest in here in the UK on the screen now. Until next time though, thanks so much for watching and as always, happy investing.